This is the Cabo Wolf Warrior X, and this is the Cabo Wolf Warrior X Pro. They're not just smaller, less expensive Wolf Warriors. For most riders, they're better Wolf Warriors. We all know the Wolf Warrior 11, the original beast scooters, and one of the world's best heavyweights, both on and off road. Well, if they're so great, why don't we see them every day? It's because at 102 pounds, they can be a little difficult for most people to live with. So Cabo solved that problem by bringing out the slimmed down Wolf Warrior X, which retains the best things about the Wolf Warrior 11 in a package that's a perfect fit for most riders between 160 and 220 pounds. In this review, we'll cover what the Wolf X's do better than the Wolf Warrior, a couple of things they do worse, and who would be better off with a Mantis instead. We've also got a world's first, we'll take the Wolf Warrior X Pro and compare its tested performance against the Wolf Warrior X base model, one of the world's first scooters to come with a sign drive motor controller. The performance results are going to surprise you, and at the very end of the video, we'll tell you why we think one of the two Wolf X's is just plain better than the other. At a retail price of $2,099, the base Model X is the first Wolf Warrior to break into the light heavyweight price category. For $400 more, the Pro gives you a 33% larger battery made with LG cells, a mini motors controller, and an EY3 display. The X's are smaller and lighter than the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, but are they as quick? Almost. The Wolf Warrior 11 Plus and Mantis Pro are the quickest of the group from 0 to 20 miles per hour, but the X's are by no means slow. The base model X beats the lightning fast Mantis Pro to 30 miles per hour and to every speed beyond. This brings us to the first surprise. The base model Wolf Warrior X is actually quicker and has higher top speed than the Pro model. This is due to the base model's 30 amp controller, which is strangely higher than the Pro's 27 amp controller. On the racetrack, the Wolf Warrior X's smooth acceleration is a huge advantage. Jomar Tariman of Cabo Philippines Racing told us that he could turn faster lap times on the Wolf Warrior X Pro than the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus or even the Wolf King because of the X's superior throttle response and handling. While they don't have the arm yanking quickness of the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, the X and X Pro have all the top speed you'll ever need. They both easily beat the Mantis Pro and the base Wolf Warrior X surprisingly comes within one mile per hour of the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. The Wolf Warrior X scooters may be 22 pounds lighter than the 11 Plus, but they give up nothing on range. The X Pro is the fifth longest range scooter we've ever tested. It covered 40.9 miles in top performance mode on our range test circuit. The base model Wolf Warrior X beat the Big Wolf and nearly matched the Mantis Pro, despite having the smallest battery capacity of the group. All four comparison scooters are equipped with Zoom hydraulic brakes. Stopping the Wolf Warrior X is required more hand strength than the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus or the Mantis Pro, but ironically, this led to better stopping distances because it was easier to find the limits of traction. The Wolf X's beat the comparison scooters here, as well as 91% of the scooters we've ever tested. The Wolf Warrior 11 Plus and Wolf Warrior X base model are both among the top 10 fastest scooters ever to scale our 10% test hill. Here again, another surprise Surprise, the base model beat the Pro by more than half a second. The Wolf Warrior X and Pro are fantastic grand tourers. With hydraulic dual stem front suspension and spring polyurethane suspension at the back end, these are scooters that will get you to your destination quickly and comfortably while carving corners the whole way. I have to agree with the Cabo racing team here, the Wolf Warrior X is one of the best handling scooters ever made. One thing you may not know is the Wolf's dual stem build lends itself to less wobble at high speed due to its design. Think of an ice skater with their arms spread out. They spin somewhat slowly compared to when they bring their arms inward. The more weight that's further from the pivot point, the more force it will take to rotate left and right. So a dual stem will naturally tend to have less rotational wobble and have less need for a steering damper than a scooter with a single stem. The twin dual clamp collars also mean no wobble from front to back. 
Handlebar height is a very comfortable 39 inches from the deck. Surprisingly, more than an inch taller than the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, and this is a very good thing, as our favorite handlebars are usually 40 to 41 inches tall. The Wolf X's deck is actually half an inch longer than the deck of the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, but it's also 1.2 inches narrower, resulting in 13% less deck space overall, so it's noticeably smaller than the 11 Plus. However, it's still right on par with most light heavyweight scooters and has plenty of room to move around during long rides. The Wolf Warrior X scooters come standard from Fluid Freeride with road tires. They have excellent grip and their quiet tread pattern helps reveal the scooter's silent motors and rattle free ride. Off-road tires are also available and relatively easy to change because of the split rims. Like other Cabo scooters, the Wolf X's grips don't have great palm support, but they're very easy to change. The new headlight and turn signal buttons are located within easy reach, light up to indicate which lights are active, and have an excellent tactile and audible click. The signals aren't self-canceling, so if you're like me, you'll end up riding around with one or both blinkers on from time to time. The turbo and dual buttons look and feel great, but continue to disappoint by making you guess which mode you're in. The throttles are a mixed bag. The base model Wolf X comes equipped with the LT01 throttle, which has better finger ergonomics as it can be adjusted closer to the brake lever, but can be challenging to read in direct sunlight. The EY3 throttle is easy on the eyes, but its bulk means a larger reach between the brake and the throttle, even when the two are adjusted as close together as can be. Overall fit and finish is everything you'd expect from a Wolf Warrior, except fragile plastic side lights on the deck would make us reluctant to take it very far off-road. The rear fender protection is not great. If you decide to ride in the rain, you'll want to extend the rear fender or you're going to get wet. Speaking of rear fenders, early units had a problem with the rear tire rubbing on the inside of the fender over large bumps. We're happy to report that this problem has been solved. Our resident big dog, Ray Mir, reported no fender dragging issues on either of our Wolf X's, even when riding off curves. Another recent upgrade from Cabo is that the new Wolf Warrior scooters now come with stronger, forged aluminum end caps on the forks. One thing we didn't care for is the way the wiring on the side of the forks gets pinched when the handlebars are turned fully to the right. This is easy to avoid if you're aware of it, but it would be even easier if Cabo had just installed a proper steering stop. For the very big dogs, the Wolf Warrior 11 and the Wolf King are still the best choices. Maximum rider weight for the X is higher than most at 265 pounds, but still below the exceptional 330 pound spec of the 11 Plus and the King. Let's go get Ray Mir's take on what it's like to ride the Wolf Warrior X's. I was saying, hell yeah. I'm saying it takes everything that I like about the Wolf Warrior, but it makes it better though, because it's smaller, I guess. I don't know, the Wolf Warrior slash Wolf King is still probably my favorite scooter, but this one is good, man. It pulls you, it takes you. It's, it's driving fast, but what the thing about it is, the price point compared to the other scooters that's dual motor, they have that single stem. And that's how I said the uh, Wolf apart, I mean, the wolf, yeah, the Wolf's apart is, how I, I like the double stem. I, I did full speed, and I was like, still, like you thought, you know, normally you'd be all like, but with this one, I was like riding, but I was still like this, you know? It's kind of smooth. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't stop saying, hell yeah. Like, you would've thought I was stone cold. Give me a hell yeah! The X and X Pro are 22 pounds lighter and more than a foot shorter than the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, which means that it's possible to load one by yourself, even if you don't own a truck. The Wolf X's twin double clamp folding mechanism takes about twice as long to fold and deploy as the Mantis's clamp, but is faster and more intuitive than the Big Wolf's cool but needlessly complex design, which gets longer when folded. The Wolf X is slightly shorter than the Mantis when folded and several inches taller, but still passes our trunk test. The 65 pound Mantis is definitely the best of the group when it comes to portability. The X is the complete package for safety and one of the best scooters ever for night riding. Both models come with the same dazzling double headlight as the 11 Plus and the Wolf King, but also give you super bright front and rear turn signals that double as hazard lights. And brilliant deck lighting with an app that lets you control the light's pattern, color, and speed. The motorcycle grade horn is perfect in traffic, but you may want to add a bell to avoid startling pedestrians. We're also going to count these slightly cartoony looking cast aluminum side stand as a safety upgrade since it doesn't stick out as far as the blade like stand on the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. Pros include best lighting package for night riding, excellent stability in handling, 
exceptional comfort and speed for long rides, and passes the trunk test. Cons include fragile side lights, throttle ergonomics on the Pro model, and difficult to read dash in bright light on the base model. The Wolf Warrior X isn't just an easier to live with, less expensive Wolf Warrior. If you're 160 to 220 pounds, I think it's a better Wolf Warrior. And because the suspension and handling are so good, I think it's a better Mantis Pro too. It's got nearly the same top speed and stability as a Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. It passes the trunk test like a Mantis Pro, but handles even better. It's mid-priced and right out of the box is the complete package for riding at night and safety, including outstopping just about everything. So for non-big dogs, I think we both agree that we like the Wolf Warrior X and X Pro better than the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. But which one's your favorite, Chuck? It's all about that base. All about the base, about the base, no. <laughs> the base uh, model, you mean? The base model, yeah. So the, the, it's you know kind of crazy because normally the Pro model is the better one. In fact, I don't remember a time that the Pro model wasn't the better one. For these scooters, it is the base model. Unless you need the more range of the Pro in that LG battery, the base model has a much smoother throttle, which I personally love, and it's actually way faster. That was the big surprise. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think hands down, save a little money, get that base. So now that we've answered the question, why did Kahlo make a mini Wolf Warrior? I've got a new question. Why didn't they make it sooner? If you'd like to learn more about the Cabo Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, check out this review. Or if you're curious about something lighter weight, check out the Mantis Pro.